the last mile distribution is still a challenge uh, in india for the seafood so like in west you do not have all these you know filleted fish or like different productization so there is a huge opportunity for the uh, domestic market for fish and shrimp in india which is yet to be explored and i would invite uh, some of the you know brightest minds to you know think about the domestic market angle Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Startup Operator Podcast. On this episode, I'm talking to Raj, who is the founder and CEO of AquaConnect. AquaConnect is, um, you know, plays in the fish and shrimp cultivation ecosystem. They're streamlining this very fragmented ecosystem with uh, technology and financing. Uh, as Raj says, they have boots on the ground and eyes in the sky to ensure that you know market linkages are established. and uh, you know there's enough data to mitigate risks on financing and so on and so forth again they very thoughtfully building out a full stack solution for this ecosystem uh, it's something that we've seen you know with the likes of uh, let's say zetwork of business resha mandi and the likes right where people are going beyond uh, just a managed marketplace and layering software automation and financing uh and really solving 360 uh, degrees of um, uh, of the solution right i mean for uh, of the persona uh, really so yeah this was an interesting conversation about a domain that we don't know uh, too much about and i certainly enjoyed it so yeah i hope you find it interesting i hope you like it hey raj welcome to the startup operator podcast thank you so much for making the time thank you for hosting me roshan uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you Yeah I've been looking forward to this chat uh, for quite a while again thank you so much for your patience you operate in a very interesting domain and uh, I don't think people really know much about this uh, so I would love to understand about the domain right fish and shrimp cultivation you know what is the market like what is the ecosystem who are the stakeholders what are the challenges they face and uh, yeah more more importantly why do you decide to operate in this space all right Yeah as you rightly pointed out this is a niche of the niche sector right like agri used to be considered a, a, a niche now like there are like many agri tech companies are upcoming and uh, some of them have already become a unicorn too so in the food production valuation yes uh, fisheries is upcoming and aquaculture is nothing but growing aquatic animals like uh, fish and shrimp in a controlled pond so india is uh, uh, one of the uh, major aquaculture producer it might be surprising to many of us that we are the second largest aquaculture producers globally and uh, we produce close to uh, 14 million metric ton of uh, fish and shrimp every year and uh, this whole value chain is worth about 25 billion dollars wow. uh, in india alone and there are some interesting facts that i can further share that india is the largest exporter of frozen shrimp to the world as well so we are exporting close to 7 billion dollar worth seafood every year it this industry is that big and uh, there are about 5 million uh, aquaculture farmers who are undertaking fish and shrimp aquaculture and globally we are contributing about uh, one sixth of uh, you know production so this market is that massive and uh, we are one of the largest aquaculture producers uh, globally right so you know i have spoken to a couple of agri tech founders more than a couple in fact and uh, you know when you look at agri tech specifically right there are just so many challenges that are ripe for you know solving by technology right i mean whether it is market linkage uh whether whether it is data whether it is software automation you know supply chains so on and so forth there's just literally like a plethora of problems that you can solve for and uh, so when you look at it from the outside i mean it seems it seems like so lucrative right what are those two or three insights uh, that you realized once you started operating that was kind of counterintuitive for you um so let me you know share our experiences here like uh Uh, what were the challenges that we were uh, set out to solve and uh, where did we end up right so one thing is like one of the uh, uh, like i jokingly say that the the farmers are already using uh, ai i mean ancestral intelligence <laughs> right whenever i uh, walk into a farm and uh, the farmers uh, you know uh, i mean many times i've heard saying it's like uh, my uh, experience is your age right so that's the kind of response that we get when we talk about technology to the farming community right so people uh, seem to have already you know learned many things by you know practicing but at the end of the day there are like much room to improve the practices and in my view the biggest impediment for any development is lack of data and lack of data driven decision making capabilities so with the data you would be able to first identify the problem 
So the moment you identify the problem, then there could be like many solutions that we can, you know, come up with. But unfortunately, in uh, many of the sectors, uh, traditional sectors in India, including agriculture or aquaculture, so there is a lack of data. And uh, uh, we set out to, you know, solve that problem in first place. And uh, we seem to be like achieved a fair amount of success in the last five years. Right. But it's also is a complex system, right? I mean, there is no perfect information as such. And there's just too many variables involved. So how do you sort of standardize all of these things and make it kind of like a controlled system for you to look at data and then hypothesize based on that? All right. So let me quickly walk you through how this aquaculture uh, activity is undertaken here. Like, so in the West, I had traveled to, you know, Norway, I had traveled to many other uh, Western uh, countries who do aquaculture. So there, the demography is completely different. So when you talk about Norway, there are very few corporate entities who are into aquaculture. And uh, when you talk about aquaculture, they are like vertically integrated. So they start with their uh, breeding program. They have their own hatcheries. They have their own nurseries. From the nurseries, they will take it out to the ponds, which are the marine cages. And uh, then they have their own harvesting systems. So they have the processing plants and it's kind of highly vertically integrated. So there is a, uh, you know, a fair amount of traceability that exists in the system and uh, the data has been generated at each and every point. So it's, it's much easier to tame that kind of a system compared to what we have in uh, emerging uh, geographies like India or Southeast Asia. So here we have got different set of problems. Uh, we have like uh, the demography challenge, such as like we have got like huge numbers number of small and medium holding farmers. So the standardization becomes like much difficult in our geography. So this is when uh, we need to, you know, go with uh, AI plus AI, that is like our, our ancestral intelligence with artificial intelligence. So we need to go for a hybrid model. So that is when uh, in AquaConnect initially we used to, you know, come up with pure tech solutions for the farming community. Over a period, we realized that like uh, you got to, you know, capture the imagination of the farmers. So, I mean, we need to, you know, create usable systems and we need to use community engagement model. On top of that, you need to be like bringing in technology solutions then uh, that comprehensive omni-channel approach really works well with uh, Bharat. Right. So I'd love to understand a lot more about the communication. But before that, I mean, I think we're at a point in the conversation where it's useful to let people understand what AquaConnect is, right? So what is AquaConnect today, you know, uh, and what are some of the common use cases that you're serving? Sure. So before that, I'll quickly, you know, walk you through how aquaculture is done in India. So that gives a context or, uh, you know, people can imagine how it is done here, right? So uh, we get uh, seafood uh, largely through two sources. One is uh, aquaculture that is commercially produced farm fed, you know, uh, seafood. And the other one is marine cod. So uh, as uh, uh, we say, like the large chunk of our seafood, about 75% of seafood that you are eating in India is coming from the farms. Um, so uh, the way it is uh, done here is uh, the shrimp and fish farmers, they go to a hatchery, they buy the fingerlings or uh, post larvae, that is baby shrimp and then baby fishes, then they take it to their ponds. Typically a pond is of uh, one acre in uh, size and it would have like four to five feet deep water into it. So uh, they then stock them up in the pond and they grow them for about, uh, you know, five to eight months of period, depending upon the size uh, of the, you know, harvest that they would like to, you know, achieve. During this period, there are certain, you know, parameters that you need to undertake uh, and the monitor and then take care of. The first one is water quality. The second parameter is feeding uh, efficiency. And the third part is like animal health care. So, if you are growing uh, these fishes and shrimp in the water, you need to, you know, monitor the water quality, like, you know, what is the uh, uh, dissolved oxygen in the water, amount of dissolved oxygen in the water, and the nitrate, nitrate, and then salinity, alkalinity. So there are about like 10 different parameters one have to look for. And the second part is like feeding efficiency. So 60% of the cost of culture goes into feeding the animal. So you have to control the efficiency of the feeding so that like uh, you can get good returns out of that crop. And the third part, the animals are like babies. They can catch diseases anytime. So you have to provide enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, healthcare supplements, minerals, so that like uh, we would be able to, you know, keep them healthy in the pond. So once uh, this is done, like you, you do the farming for about like five to eight months period, then uh, you would have to take it to the local markets through the middleman. 
so uh, this is how this large uh, you know value chain operates so there are like middlemen in every transaction points so they are the ones who would be like creating opacity between the layers so um, as i mentioned before since this is not vertically integrated so that is when the middlemen are the one who would be like creating challenges in terms of transparency further i would be able to you know walk you through what are the problems that we are solving here one is uh, for the farmer he is looking for you know scientific advisory on how to improve the water quality uh, how do how does he you know uh, how can he improve the feeding efficiency and further how can he improve the health uh, of the animal as well right and uh, it, there are like he has got business level challenges so these are the business level challenges and there are like underlying financial challenges as well so uh, most of these farmers uh, do not have access to formal capital so they depend on the informal lenders so typically they the cost of capital is very very high so to start his farming activity he is looking for some kind of a capital and then further when he is harvesting uh, he has to you know provide it to the middleman and middleman takes about 2 to 3 weeks to pay them the harvest payment so so these are the inefficiencies that are existing for the farmers and also uh, there are issues uh, on accessing quality inputs such as like uh, you know feed healthcare products to groom the animals so these are some of the challenges that the farmer has got and uh, as i told you before 60% of uh, uh, you know cost of culture goes into feeding the animal so there is a uh, you know retailer network that provides the fish feed and the shrimp feed to the farmers and these are the village level entrepreneurs so they have certain challenges like uh, aggregation of multiple uh, farm inputs and healthcare products so that becomes a major challenge for them and also they had to work with multiple uh, companies corporate entities so it's very difficult for them to you know aggregate it at one place and uh, further there are like working capital challenges for the input providers as well and uh, if you kind of move further uh, down uh, the line uh, we have got buyers so as i told you uh, india is one of the largest exporter of uh, seafood so they are looking for sourcing uh, assistance on the ground so the middlemen are the one who are creating opacity that is the uh, Uh, negatively impacting the quality and pricing, uh, like of the seafood. So that is when we have like challenges on you know accessing the traceability and transparency of the uh, sourcing processes as well. And last but not the least, even the buyers have got uh, uh, working capital challenges to expand their businesses. right so to sum it up each of the stakeholders have got a business level challenge and they have got a financing challenges as well underlying so we are set out to you know solve these challenges for the stakeholders by providing uh, business level interventions as well as you know financial solutions to them right so that's a whole plethora of problems that you're solving right i mean you're truly building a full stack solution with software marketplace and financing solutions right this runs counter to some of the startup advice you generally hear which is that you know you focus on one thing and you focus on that niche and you do really well and then add things to that right but what has been your experience why was there a need to solve all ends of the problem from the beginning itself all right so we are a full stack aquaculture platform so let me tell you where our focus lies right so we are solving a uh, farmers problem at heart and by enabling the players around them right so as i told you the farmers have got a lack of access to the scientific farm advisory they have lack of access to the inputs they have lack of access to the financing and finally when they are selling their harvest they are not able to you know command the price that they want so we are solving this problem by knitting the other value chain stakeholders together and uh, on the farm side of the business through the aqua partners so we have you know enabled network of aqua partners who are our franchisee stores and the aqua partners are the one who are enabling access to the quality inputs to them and we have upskilled the aqua partners to provide scientific advisory to the farmers and also these are the ones who would be able to enable financing solutions to them as well so farmers are getting all such you know solutions from my aqua partner and on the downstream again i am enabling buyer to buy it directly from the farmers through my aqua bazaar intervention so it is a farmer focused solution but we are enabling the enablers like aqua partners on one side and the buyers on the other side for aqua partner and the buyer i am solving different set of uh, so problems that is like for uh, aqua partner 
he needs to aggregate all the farm level inputs that's the one challenge and he is also looking for financing so through the retailer channel financing uh, solutions i am able to provide the farm input aggregation as well as uh, financing that input on the downstream value chain the buyer is looking to expand his business he is looking for quality sourcing and he is looking for transparency and traceability of the seafood that he is buying and finally to expand his business he is looking for financing solution here i am kind of you know knitting it together so that like i would be able to solve uh, problems of different uh, stakeholders through aqua connects uh, platform right yeah so if, I, if i'm hearing this correctly i don't think you can solve any one problem in isolation right i mean if you increase the yield i mean the obvious next thing will be that hey i mean what do i do with this like how can i get the best price for this and so on right i mean and so on throughout the end to end ecosystem per se right slight deviation here i mean you are solving this persona right for this persona the the, the person who is uh, you know cultivating fish and and so on right so do you have like a background in this i mean did you do you come from a family that perhaps owns uh, farms or 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 something like this or you know were you some someone who had no background in this and then dived head first and kind of realized everything i i kind of think it's the latter but i would love for you to uh, let us know you know what was your experience like understanding this persona sure so before commenting on that like i'll go back to your uh, previous question probably like uh, i i kind of like the the way you put it so most of the people think that uh, when you are bringing sustainability to the farmers they would like you to you know go to the farmer and address his you know uh, you know farm, uh, like whether you are improving his production whether you are improving his yield all such uh, things are you know coming in so i kind of you know try to you know take a step back and then you know i would want to you know think that you cannot solve this problem uh, in silos right we need to be thinking about bringing efficiency to the value chain so bringing efficiency to the value chain by disrupting the other uh, stakeholders uh, positively and bringing finance so that you are bringing in the efficiency and eventually this would trickle down and then improve the farmers life so uh, i in my opinion the sustainability should be looked at uh, uh, you know by transforming the entire value chain rather than looking at like one part of the value chain so i guess you summed it up really well coming to the uh, you know second question how i ended up doing this so it is pure uh, serendipity i used to uh, run two tech startup before uh, uh, aqua connect so i was into uh, mobile technology space uh, i was running a company before uh, that was into mo- providing mobile value added services to the uh, operators uh, in both asia africa as well as southeast asia so at one point of time we were running services uh, in close to 10 different markets in africa so the mobile uh, value added services to mine have given me a kind of an experience in how to package the technology efficiently as a product to the masses like it said something like they have learned it from the fmcg sector that how do we you know make some small sachet kind of products so that it goes for a mass consumption so i was at the time uh, where the mobile pocket internet has been introduced from the 2g when we moved to the 3g people have started you know selling internet as like a pocket internet like for like 10 rupees per day like or like you know uh, $1 per uh, uh, month that kind of you know subscription so that is where i learned how technology can be uh, uh, you know democratized for the masses right so still it in a, in a very sustainable way like they you are still learning uh, by you know providing that uh, packets of data and then you are not you know calling them as like internet you are calling them as like you know you can download songs you can download video you can sub- download end use cases basically the end use cases so that kind of really you know uh, kind of inspired me uh, to create you know technology solutions for the uh, masses so and again like every good thing has to you know end and technology ends very soon like we were providing mobile value added services and uh, eventually the 3g 4g has come so uh, we have shrunk as a data pipe pipe the mobile operators have shrunk as a data pipe so uh, everything has you know gone ott and i was like uh, looking for some you know green pasture and this time you know farming sector uh, caught my attention and to answer your question straight forward like i do not have any experience in aquaculture before uh, i entered uh, here into aqua connect so i was like you know uh, in 2015 i believe like i was heading to my hometown in a train and that's when i met an aqua farmer 
right? So I was thinking that I would do broadly something in agri value chain, but this is some niche sector that caught my attention. I, I started uh, you know, chatting with them. I got to understand a little bit more about this sector. I initially thought that this is a kind of a cottage industry, wherein like people would own up a small pond, they'll do a little bit of fish or shrimp aquaculture, and they would consume it locally. But uh, then when I uh, got to speak to him, I got to understand that there is a huge export market. India is one of the uh, largest exporters. And uh, I went back and I did my own research. I got to understand that this is one of the you know upcoming sectors. And uh, this sector is considered to be a sunrise sector by government of India as well. So uh, it, it fits really well in their mandate of improving the farmer's income. So here, uh, the sector grows uh, in two, two digits every year. It's like 10% CAGR, I would claim, in the last uh, decade. And this is uh, growing faster than our GDP. So that is when this is considered to be a sunrise sector. So that's how uh, kind of you know i got interested and i started doing my research and i found that these are the challenges that existed so i would just sum it up that uh, every value chain has got some challenges like you know you know transparency is a, a, a miss and then the market linkage is another challenge and uh, underlying there is a financing challenge as well so we set out to solve these challenges in 2017 and it's been five years i'm into this journey awesome that's awesome so uh, as a typical tech guy, right, I mean, you're obviously very excited about all of this technology and stuff. And uh, now when you take technology to these farmers, right, uh, as you mentioned, you know, I mean, there is this whole gap, right? I mean, they're, they're talking about ancestral intelligence, you're talking about artificial intelligence. And so, I mean, the way you communicate to these folks uh, is really critical, right? So how did you sort of deliver that message to these folks? I mean, uh, how do you let them know that, you know, they can kind of trust you with their livelihoods? Sure. So, okay, we used to go direct to the farmers. And uh, when uh, we set out to transform this uh, industry, uh, we thought that we should be, you know, providing solutions to the farmers. Like we first created a close to a farm management platform, right? So that can be access to a mobile phone. And uh, we were doing pilots. So that's when we understood that, like, it's kind of uh, difficult to change the practices on the ground. When you're asking farmers to, you know, change their behavior or way of life, so the first day they are really excited to see that like they would be able to you know get uh, uh, data driven advisory and everything but over the period the adoption was really really low so that's when we understood that we have to you know go along and uh, uh, create solutions that can be really uh, uh, you know accepted and then scaled as well right so the best way that we found is like non intrusive like when you want to you know uh, change farmers life do not ask them to you know work more on that kind of a solution. So what we had created is like we had created non-intrusive uh, data collection methods through the transactions we are capturing the data. And uh, I would say that like we are now adopting uh, two strategies to uh, like uh, we have a hybrid strategy in place. One is like uh, uh, technologies that is like uh, uh, having like boots on the ground. like. For each stakeholders, we have provided a, a mobile application so that like they would be able to transact with us. That's at one level. And uh, we have got another layer in the sky. So it's like uh, boots on the ground and eyes in the sky kind of a, a comprehensive strategy that we are working on. So there are certain data points that we are collecting from the farmers non-intrusively. We are not you know, asking to you know, provide any input. The moment you ask them to you know, input something, there is a very less you know, adoption for such kind of a solution. So uh, that's one part of the solution. And the second part is like we are also, you know, using uh, satellite remote sensing in a very innovative way. So we are uh, one of the pioneer technology players who are using satellite remote sensing for getting more intelligence from the aquaculture ponds. So uh, for agriculture, there are like many uh, satellite remote sensing companies that are working on at the data analytics layer. Uh, because everything is above the soil, it's, it's much easier. For aquaculture, we have got like different set of challenges. So everything is underwater here. So that's when this problem gets much more complex. So you need like uh, 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 boots on the ground as well as eyes in the sky. So that's when you'd be able to, you know, create a comprehensive data analytics strategy and through which we'd be able to, you know, get an insight. And that could be used for different use cases in this value chain. Something like, you know, how do I do the demand generation for my aquaculture partners? How do I do demand generation for the buyers with a click of a button? A buyer can understand like uh, 
in 10 kilometers who are the farmers are there and what is the you know date of culture when they may probably go for harvesting so these are some of the insights we can you know provide and uh, last but not the least as i told you aquaculture is one of the you know complex sector for the uh, banks and financial institution to uh, enter into because uh, they haven't found a robust way of doing the risk mitigation since everything is underwater, how do you do the, uh, you know, underwriting efficiently? So that's when they are looking for a player like us so that like we would be able to, you know, provide uh, intelligence in terms of like, like in terms of origination, in terms of underwriting, dispersal, in terms of collection, and finally, uh, like complete uh, portfolio management for such players. Great. So how are your teams structured today? You know, I mean, I would assume that there is a marketplace team, there's perhaps a team working on financing and so on, right? So how are your teams uh, structured at AquaConnect and what what is the North Star metric for you at this point in the journey? Sure. So, so we are a multicultural, diverse and multilingual team. So as you know, like uh, India is vast geography and people speak different language and they follow different culture. So the understanding is like... Uh, to, we need to be like as close as possible to the you know farmers so that's when uh, we focus more on uh, diversity we focus on a, more on a you know, multilingual workforce on the ground and um, as uh, we are providing omni-channel services so there is a huge uh, farmer facing team and there is a huge technology uh, team that develops uh, whatever that i talked about like uh, we are developing high-end technology for this sector that does both uh, uh, data analytics as well as uh, satellite remote sensing part. Right. So you've chosen to raise debt funding right now. I mean, you've raised $8 million. Uh, any reason why debt and not conventional equity as such? Uh, well, so like equity instruments, yes, of course, we are always, you know, as you know, like as startups, uh, uh, that option is always open. But this debt round is to, you know, uh, to expand our, uh, uh, you know, Aqua Partner Network provide uh, them you know working capital and also like we are uh, expanding the post harvest value chain right so this is when uh, we are like looking for a debt fund to fulfill the working capital requirement as we speak uh, uh, we are uh, raising uh, further rounds as well right and what are some of the high level challenges that you're solving for right now in the business so largely uh, this is about you know developing the uh, right technology for this sector so that's one of the you know high level challenges that we are working on currently because the moment uh, you create a you know strong uh, technology mode you would be able to scale faster these are some of the you know points that we are at this moment uh, focusing on and uh, also there is a you know once you create the scalable solution the expansion becomes much easier for Right. So, you know, for someone who's listening to this and is uh, keen on getting their hands dirty in this space, right, and perhaps building a solution, you know, what are some of those insights that they should be aware of? What are some nuances of operating in the space? What should they be aware of uh, before entering the space and uh, starting a business? All right. So you are inviting more computers in this space. <laughs> you already have a head start. So if anything, we'll build the market out further for you. No, of course, we, we kind of, uh, the competition keeps you alive. And um, as you know, like it is one of the, you know, upcoming uh, sectors and this is, you know, growing double digits every year and uh, it's an exciting space to be. And there are like uh, many gaps that are yet to be you know, filled in this value chain. So we are one of the uh, full stack integrators and there are like uh, many other uh, opportunities that lies in this value chain, like, you know, uh, cold chain infrastructure uh, that is there because like we are dealing with like uh, perishable goods here. So uh, we can talk about uh, like uh, the new age technologies for developing cold chains and uh, further uh, we can talk about, uh, um, you know, merchandising all the uh, products that we are making here. So the last mile distribution is still a challenge uh, in India for the seafood, right? So like in West, you do not, you know, do the, uh, uh, you, do, you do not have all these, you know, um, filleted fish or like different productization that never happens in India. So there is a huge opportunity for the uh, domestic market for fish and shrimp in India, which is yet to be explored. And uh, I would invite, uh, you know, some of the, you know, brightest minds to, you know, think about uh, that uh, domestic market angle. Right. And perhaps join our AquaConnect team as well, right? Of course, we would always invite. <laughs> awesome. So Raj, before we end the podcast, uh, any books or podcasts that you would recommend to our audience? 
Well, like, see, I kind of uh, like this, the startup operator uh, podcast, <laughs> right? So that's uh, one thing that I've been recently following. And apart from that, like, see, I like uh, books in terms of uh, uh, anthropology, neurosciences, marketing and psychology. So, like, I read this recent book called, like, The Power of Habits uh, by uh, Charles. And uh, there is another book called... Uh, thinking fast and slow probably like this has been like this a thousand times so i like both the books and largely otherwise like i talk about you know zero to one the lean startups and hooks so these are some of the you know uh, very well discussed uh, uh, you know books uh, among the startup community awesome so thank you so much uh, raj thank you for being on the podcast and making time for this uh, this was certainly an interesting conversation you know very interesting space as well right i mean not uh, too many of us understand the space really well and hopefully we got uh, plenty of insights uh, from this so thank you again hopefully that was very helpful to your audience as well roshan so thank you very much for hosting me once again thank you so much for listening if you liked this episode then don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform and share this episode with all of your fellow startup operators also follow the startup operator on linkedin and twitter for more updates stay safe take care and see you soon on a brand new episode of the startup operator